Hey guys, this is Shane here from Echo Soundworks, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can recreate the synth sound that we hear in the intro and the verse to Flume's track, Rushing Back. All right, so we got initialized preset and serum ready to go. Now, the first thing I always do when I'm trying to recreate a sound is I just try to think about what type of wavetable or waveform was most likely used, because this is the hardest part, because even if you nail getting everything else right, like envelope settings, modulation, LFOs, filters, effects, and you get the source sound, the source wavetable material incorrect, it's gonna throw off your final result. Now, you're not gonna end up with a bad preset probably at that point, but it will be different from what you're trying to recreate. So when I looked at this song and I started to think about it, I realized that there's some more high-end harmonics or something going on that makes me think that's not just a sine wave because it does sound fairly sinusoidal. So it made me think it's something that was sine-ish, maybe a little bit more buzz, a little bit brighter, and the high frequencies were filtered out to give us that clean tone and that little bit of bite. So that being said, let's load up this wavetable. It's called Basic CJW. And if we look at it in the wavetable editor, we can see here that it's basically a sine wave but it's got a little bit of buzz to it. And that's because this little notch right here and right here. So if we move through our wavetail position, it gets buzzier. So let's just stop at about 15, 15, 16, somewhere in there. All right, sounds good. Let's turn our level up and let's turn our octave up plus one. So real quick, I'm gonna go to my matrix and we're gonna go and make this whole patch velocity sensitive. So go to your source, hit Velo, destination, go down to global, and then you hit amp and then make sure for type, Make sure that it's on uh, bipolar, bidirectional. So click this so it's going both down and up, or in this instance, low velocity, high velocity, and then crank this up. All right, and we're good to go. Okay, so the next thing I did was I wanted to add a little bit more kind of harmonically rich content to it. So I copied and pasted oscillator A to B, and I'm gonna turn down the volume for this. We're gonna crank this up to three semitones and we're gonna apply a little bit of FM from B, just a little. I'll crank this up so you can hear what it's doing. Right, so again, I'm just trying to get some more high frequency content, but still keep it subtle. So let's go to about 16%. So the coolest part about the sound is for sure that detuned moving kind of a vibrato sound. Now it's not a pure vibrato, it's not a vibrato in a conventional sense because it's too slow. For instance, uh, for those of you who don't know, Serum actually has a default vibrato shape in the basic folder in the LFO. And if you just modulate your fine pitch, right, you get a vibrato. So it's not, it's not that type of shape. So let's remove that. Let's go to LFO1, and we're going to pull up a shape that I made for this, and I could make this from scratch. It just saves me about two minutes of your guys' time. All right, so it's a pretty weird shape, but you'll see why it's shaped like this in a second. So let's drag this up to our fine pitch. I'm going to turn this down to about 87, and let's turn BPM off. We don't want to have a very noticeable synced amount, right? The cool thing about the sound is it seems kind of like free running. It's just out there doing its thing. So let's turn this down to about one hertz. And make sure trigger and envelope are both off. You can only have one on at a time, but make sure it's off. What this means is that instead of re-triggering every time a note is pressed or incoming MIDI is received, uh, basically it's just gonna run on its own, which is what we want. I'm gonna apply that same modulation to our second oscillator as well. All right, so let's go to the mod matrix and we're gonna apply an aux source to this just so we can control that LFO anytime we want. So we're gonna go and select for the aux source macro one. Now, if you guys are confused about what's going on, don't worry. This just means that now I can control LFO one pitch, which is assigned to two destinations with one knob. So right now, because our aux source is controlling this, we don't hear that pitch wobble. And now I can turn that up and that's basically like where it was set by default. So if I turn this down, it'd be like us turning both of these sliders down. All right, so now it's time to shape the sound. And when I, when I think about shaping sounds and sound design, I think about envelopes and filtering. So let's go to our first envelope, which is our amp envelope, and let's give it a little bit more attack time. Let's turn our decay down to maybe 800 or so milliseconds. And let's turn our sustain down as well. 
and our release up to a pretty good amount, probably about 600, 650. All right, so now let's go to the filter. And the filter is obviously going to be a low-pass filter. We're trying to get rid of some of the high-frequency content. So I'm going to go to a low-pass 18 or 24. I forget which one I use. Let's try 18. Let's turn the frequency, the cutoff frequency, to about 2,000. Turn the resonance up just a little. Add a little bit of drive and fat. And let's turn our mix down to about 96, 97% to let just a little bit more of those high frequencies through. All right, step four, the effects. Now, what I did was I just quickly did these off camera and I'm just gonna run through them. A little bit of EQ, taking out the lows. A little bit of course with the, L L the LPF, the low pass filter all the way up so we don't lose all the high frequencies. The mix set to about 15%. A little bit of tube saturation. All right, so with those effects, here is our final sound. Right, so if you guys want to download either of these presets, you can. Uh, by either, I actually have a little saw synth here you just heard. I'm not going to recreate this in the, in the video. But it's just a basic saw that you hear that comes in. You can also grab the MIDI. The download link is in the description. I'll even give you that LFO shape as well. There's no download gate for that. Just click the button, click the link, and hit download. All right, guys, that's going to sum up the video. If you have any questions or comments, post those below. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing. The support does really mean a lot, and it helps us out. And if you do subscribe, smash that notification bell so you get an update when we release a new video. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.